Good morning everyone. Welcome to grade 5 mathematics class. How are you all doing today? So today let's start our class with an activity. All of you please take your maths notebook and take your pencil, ruler and eraser. You can draw anything you like as an activity now. You can pause this video, finish the drawing and come back. Hope you are done with that. So what have you drawn? You might have drawn some points, some lines or some shapes or something that you see around you. If you look around, you can see these points, lines, shapes, all the basic shapes that you know. You can see it all around you in your day to day life. So today we are going to start a new chapter, chapter 6 basic geometry and this chapter will help us learn more about these shapes and their measurements. So what is geometry? Geometry is the branch of mathematics that deals with the different shapes and their measurements. So this is a very interesting chapter. You might have learned the basics of geometry in your lower classes. So this branch of mathematics called geometry is based on three basic concepts in maths. The three basic concepts are the point, the line and the plane. So before learning more about these, let's recall a few concepts that you have learned in your lower classes. So first thing, closed curve. What do you mean by a curve? A curve is a smooth line. It's similar to a line but it does not need to be a straight line. You can also define it as like a trace or path left by a moving point. So a curve will be a closed curve when you start the curve from a point and end the curve in the same point. See, we can see some examples here. If I drew this curve from here and I come like this and if I stop it here, it becomes closed. For example, I'm going to draw a triangle. I'm starting from this point, moving again and I stopped at the exact same point and now this is closed. So this is an example of a closed curve. It can be of any shape, it can be of straight lines or it can be something curved like this. It just has to start from the point and end in the same point. So that is called a closed curve. Then what would be an open curve? A curve that does not end at the starting point is called an open curve. Like in these examples. See, none of these shapes are closed. See, like this, like this. None of these drawings or none of these shapes end at the point where it started. So such curves are called open curves. Now, polygon. What do you mean by a polygon? A polygon can be defined as a closed plane shape made up of three or more line segments which are straight lines. So what do you mean by a plane shape? It means a shape that can be drawn on a flat surface. So shapes like this which are made up of three or more line segments and are closed. These are called polygons. Now what do you mean by circle? All of you know what is the shape of the circle. See a circle can be defined as a simple closed curve in which all the points on the circle are at the same exact distance from the center of the circle. Look at this circle given here. See this is the center of the circle. You can see a point there and all the points on the circle. All the points on the circle are at the same distance from the center of the circle. And this distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle that is called the radius of the circle. Clear? We can see the radius marked here. It is the distance from the center to any point on the circle. And if you connect any two points on the circle like this, you get a straight line connected from one point to another point on the circle and such a line is called a chord. How do you spell it? It's called a chord. C H O R D. 
and a cord that passes through the center of the circle is called the diameter. See, it starts from one point on the circle, passes through the center and it moves to or it extends to another point on the circle and diameter is the longest cord of a circle. Clear? Now, line. What do you mean by a line? A line can be defined as something which extends indefinitely in both directions through some points. You can see a line here and you can see two points marked here A and B. There are infinite points that can be marked on a line. Why? Because a line is something that never ends. It extends in both directions and that's why you can see two arrows which means it's extending both ways. Now, if that is a line, what is a line segment? A line segment is a part of a line, a segment or a piece of a line. See, you can see a line here which is extending in both directions and you can see two points marked here, point A and point B. And the part of this line between the points A and B, that is called the line segment. You can see the line segment AB here. See, so a line segment has both starting and end points. This line segment starts from point A and ends in point B. See, point A and point B and this is the line segment. And it is something which has a fixed length. A line extends indefinitely whereas a line segment has a definite length which can be measured. Clear? Now, a ray. What do you mean by a ray? A ray is also a part of a line but it has a starting point but it goes on endlessly. It is not something that has a definite length. See, you can see a ray PQ here and it has a starting point or a source here which is the point P and it extends infinitely to this direction and you can see an arrow here which means it's something that is extending that in that direction and Q is another point marked on this ray. So you can name this ray as ray PQ and you see how you write a ray you write the names of two points on it and then you draw an arrow above it. An arrow that has a head, arrow head only on one side which means it is extending only in one direction. Clear? So a ray is something which has a starting point but no end point and it extends indefinitely in one direction. Clear? Now, we can do an activity now. I hope you all have your ruler with you and your maths note and your pencil with you. Now let's draw a line segment of length 5 cm 5 mm. How do you draw a line using a ruler and a pencil? See on your ruler you can see divisions like these marked on it. Along one side you can see divisions which represent centimeters and on the other side you can see divisions which represent inches and on the centimeter side you can see divisions like 0, 1, 2 etc marked on it. Have a look at your ruler you can see the measurements the divisions start from 0. All of you see that see 0 between 0 and 1 you can see 10 divisions and between 1 and 2 you can see 10 divisions. So between each main division there are 10 subdivisions. These smaller divisions represent millimeters whereas this main divisions or bigger divisions represent centimeters. So what you see between 0 and 1 that is called 1 centimeter and the smaller divisions between 0 and 1 or 1 and 2 or 2 and 3. Those 10 smaller divisions represent 10 millimeters whereas each division is 1 millimeter. So when you are measuring you always start measuring from point 0. So after, after 0 it is the first division is 0 0.1 centimeter or 1 millimeter and after that it is 2 millimeters or 0 0.2 centimeters. Then in the middle you can see a smaller line. 
and that represents a division of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 millimeters or 0.5 or half a centimeter. So I hope you all are thorough with these concepts. Now when you are drawing a line, what you have to do? You have to place your ruler on the paper and with your pencil you have to put a mark on point zero. Then you have to name that point. You can point, you can name it like A or B or P. You can name the point with a capital letter. Here I am marking it as A. Keeping the ruler in that, you have to check where you have 5 cm and 5 mm length. So start measuring from 0. So when it, when it comes to 1, it is 1 cm. When it reaches 2, it is 2 cm. Then 3 cm, 4 cm. And when you reach 5 here, it is 5 cm. But you have to draw 5 cm, 5 mm. So where is 5 mm? So between 5 and 6, you have 10 divisions. The first smaller division after 5 is 5 cm, 1 mm or 5.1 cm. The second division is 5 cm, 2 mm or 5.2 cm. The third division will be 5 cm, 3 mm. The fourth one 5 cm, 4 mm. And the fifth division, the fifth smaller division between 5 and 6. That is where the point 5 cm, 5 mm is. So there you have to mark a point that you can name as B. Then you have to connect the points A and B using this ruler. So that's how you draw a line segment given a measurement using the ruler and a pencil. So after drawing the line it should look like this. Here you can see the line segment AB and you can see the measurement written there line segment AB is equal to 5 cm 5 mm and did you notice the small line above the letters AB that is the notation for a line segment you represent a line segment with the name of the points and above that you draw a small line so that is how you represent a line segment hope you are clear with this now we can go through these topics in page number 102 and 103 of your textbook go through the topic once again and then you can see the question number one two three and four in question number one the first one question a we have already discussed in class you have to complete the rest of the questions questions 1b 1c and also the questions 2 3 and 4 in page number 103 you can see the heading maths around us please go through that as well and do accordingly so that's all for today children we will meet in the next class till then bye